from the Convergence Studio in the School of Communication. This is Loyola News Chicago. Hi, and welcome to Loyola News Chicago. I'm Victoria Serbniak. And I'm Kamil Zavatsky. Here's today's news. A man accused of a hate crime in January is no longer a Loyola student, the Phoenix reports. 21-year-old Sean Little allegedly assaulted an openly gay man on a CTA train, according to the Chicago Police Department. Little was indicted on multiple felony counts and could face up to five years in prison if convicted. Little's arraignment in Cook County Court is still pending, but Loyola officials confirmed he has already gone through the school's judicial process and is no longer enrolled here. It's been seven years since the start of the war in Iraq. Loyola students marked the anniversary Friday with an annual protest called the Die In at Loyola. About 20 students covered themselves in sheets and blankets as other members of the Loyola Anti-War Network read names of U.S. and Iraqi soldiers killed in the war. Some students stopped and watched the protest while the Anti-War Network passed out pamphlets and headbands to onlookers. While the group plans to grow, it also expects resistance. Member Anne-Marie Barrett has one message the Anti-War Coalition wants to give students that war is wrong and that any <laughs> that any idea that violence is going to end future violence is not true and we can no longer depend on it as a society so violence begets violence and it's not okay the network's next event is a celebration of social justice called bust it for justice on april 8th four chicago area moms have launched lilieslist.com a new student loan gift network According to their website, anyone with student loans can use Lily's List to network with family, friends, and alumni. Contributors can directly deposit funds to help current and graduated students reduce their school debt. Membership costs $15 a year and is activated after the student's loan status is verified. Lily's List is a response to concerns over students burdened by rising school debt. <coughs> According to the Phoenix, Loyola graduates on average have more debt than those of both North Northwestern and the U of C. Harsh economic times have a new generation tightening their belts and looking for jobs, but the rising unemployment rate is leaving many college students in the dust. Kathy Kelly reports on the challenges they're facing and how Loyola is helping. Sophomore David Fingerman, like many college students, says he needs a paycheck to help pay for school. I don't, I don't have the luxury of not have, being able to work. The only problem is, he can't seem to find a job. They will take applications, but they say they're not hiring these days. I mean, no one's really given me a particular reason, but I, I think that everybody at this point in time is still kind of suffering from the economy, so I can understand that if they have a staff that works fine, they don't want to add anybody else on. David is frustrated by the harsh effects of the economy and is struggling to pay his way through school without having a job. I think there are far more students, or far more people looking for positions and a lot of competitions going for one job. As for David, well, he says giving up is not an option. Kathy Kelly, Loyola New Chicago. The Career Center advises students who are looking for a job or internship to attend one of the career fairs on campus. The biggest one of the semester is Thursday, March 25th in the Gentile Center from noon to 4 p.m. The fair is free to all current Loyola students and alumni and $5 for all non-Loyola students. For more information, log on to Rambler Link. Loyola is launching a new group on LinkedIn.com to allow students and alumni to network with advisors and seek career advice. LinkedIn is a social networking site where job seekers can post their professional profiles and connect with potential employers. Students and alumni can register for the group on Loyola's Career Development Center site. You can also look over the do's and don'ts of online networking before you get started. Does your NCAA look as bad as everybody else's? If so, you are a victim of the recent upsets from the first round of March Madness. Several teams shocked fans and changed their expectations of the tournament this past weekend. Fans watched some of the biggest upsets on CBS. Villanova beat St. Mary's, Northern Iowa won over Kansas, and Michigan State beat Maryland at the buzzer. But one Loyola student is still hopeful. Upsets this tournament's one of the more surprising uh, ever. And my team, though, the team I picked to win it is still in. I got Duke going all the way. Um, they're a real good team. But as the Sweet 16 tournament comes up Thursday, diehard fans are worried there will be more upsets as March Madness winds up. Have you ever thought about how many text messages you send a day? 
According to new data from CTIA, or the U.S. Wireless Association, Americans are talking, web surfing, and sending more texts than ever. The CTIA says Americans are using over 6 billion minutes per day and sending more than 5 billion texts per day. With amounts as staggering as that, it's a wonder our thumbs aren't tired. Uh, 5 billion texts? How many do you send? I don't send that much. I, I send more texts than that event, actually, so I'm guilty of that. <laughs> Well, that's our newscast for today. Thanks for watching Learning News Chicago. Be sure to catch us next week for the latest news. Have a great week.